this is about compaction in Cassandra. Let's start with just two words about Cassandra. It's a distributed database, uh, and locally the data is organized as a log structured merge tree. What does the latter mean? Uh, an LSM tree is something where you, your data is separated in multiple components. When you write something to the data, um, you, you first put it in a buffer, which is the mem table and commit log. From time to time, the buffer fills up and it gets flushed into immutable SS tables on disk. From time to time, these immutable SS tables need to be reorganized using a process called compaction uh, to move into another level of the compaction hierarchy. And when you're trying to read data from, from the LSM tree, you're basically consulting all these components and you're combining the output of uh, each of them to give you the result that you pass on to the user. Now, um, if we didn't have compaction, uh, every time the buffer fills up, we do a flush, we'll create a new, um, a new SS table. And if you do this for a long enough time, you'll get an accumulation of lots and lots and lots of SS tables. And every query is going to be very slow because you have to consult all of these SS tables to get your, your output. So we need a process which takes this, um, this set of SS tables and uh, reorganizes it in a way that makes it easier to read. Um, how it does this is by doing a compaction, which is taking a piece of data and writing it again in a more, more organized way. So it basically it has to balance between the number of uh, SS tables you have to consult for a read and the number of times you have to rewrite every piece of data to make it, to reorganize it, to make it easier to read. So um, it's different read amplification and different write amplification and different compaction strategies, many exist, um, uh, use different ways to balance between the read and write. In Cassandra, the main or general purpose compaction strategies are two. There's size tier compaction strategy and leveled compaction strategy. And they're very different. If you, if you look at this, there's uh, basically nothing that's, that's similar. On one hand, um, size tiered compaction always creates one output file, never splits, while leveled compaction splits everything on, uh, into very small SS tables. Um, also, leveled compaction tries to maintain an non-overlapping run of SS tables on each level, while size tier has overlapping ones. Um, they even use a different terminology for the same thing, like um, they have a, a size tier compaction strategy has a threshold for uh, the size that everything grows, grows by uh, for every level, while level compaction strategy calls it a fun factor. Um, but if you abstract a, a little bit away of um, how, how it actually works, you can look at the target state of these compaction hierarchies. And that's the most important thing. Uh, so what are they trying to achieve? What is the state that they like? And um, so compaction strategy works by looking at the state and seeing, is it the one I like or not? And if it's not, it does a compaction to try to make it, to turn it into the state that it likes. So the target state of these two is precise tiered. We group them by levels, in levels by, uh, some power through threshold. So every time we do a compaction, the size of the output as a stable grows by, uh, by the, the threshold because we take threshold many SS tables, we compact them, the result is supposed to be that many times bigger. So generally you get a hierarchy which um, grows by, uh, by this threshold for every level of index. So the number of levels is a logarithm of the size of your data. And um, for every level, it maintains less than threshold many SS tables. Leveled on the other hand, it maintains one non-overlapping SS table on each level, only one, and uh, it turns the size uh, thing around. So it manually tracks the levels, and then it checks whether or not the size of the level is below a certain multiplier, uh, sorry, a certain power of the fun factor. Uh, let's do a little trick and turn this around for level compaction strategy. Let's put the size of the level as the first, the primary concern. If we do this, then leveled compaction strategy, we can understand it as something that groups as a stable runs in levels based on their size. Because if a level grows beyond its, um, um, beyond its size limit, you can understand it that it actually belongs to the next level because it's bigger than, than the band where it should normally stand. So in this case, it grew to be bigger if there already is something bigger on the next level, you, could, you need to combine these two because there's no, no, no longer only one SS table on that level. Now, this brings the two much closer together. Um, and academics have been doing this for, for a very long time. 
uh, they're basically saying that uh, tiered and leveled compactions, they share lots of things, and there are only two things that are different about them. Uh, so for both of these, levels grow by a specified fun factor. So you start with some, some base level size, uh, some, some base S level size. Every time there's a compaction, it grows by, uh, sorry, every time to move on to the next level, you have to grow the size by the given fact, fun factor. And tiered compaction accepts multiple overlapping SS tables per level, while leveled compaction only has to have, has to always have at most one. Uh, this means that for tiered compaction, once they reach the fun factor many, you do one compaction, and that is um, enough to be promoted, to, to be understood to be on the next level. While for leveled compaction, you have to do more, more than one compaction. You have something that comes in, and get, gets compacted. The size doesn't grow so much as to move to the next level. You have to compact it again. So you do multiple compactions to move on to the next level. This means that uh, when you're doing writes, they essentially have to go through um, fun factor minus one many compactions for every level. But on the other hand, if you read them, you only consult one for each level. For tiered is the other way around. You have to consult multiple to read data from that level, but it, you only do one compaction to get to the next level. So tiered has low write amplification, but high read amplification. Level has low reads and high write amplification. Um, splitting uh, in Cassandra uh, is something that's attached to the strategy. It doesn't have to be. It's a completely orthogonal concern. So um, one of the things we're trying to do is to separate this concern. And um, this bring, gives rise to our um, basic unified compaction strategy definition, uh, which is very close to STCS in terms of uh, levels are determined by SS table size uh, as, as they are in STCS. But uh, we are a little bit more precise uh, by saying that we have a minimum SS table size and if SS tables are between zero and fun factor times this minimal size, they're on level zero, then until they're F times bigger, they're on level one, and so on and so forth. Um, so now we have uh, two ways of um, deciding when to do something about, uh, about the SS tables and, and the levels. Uh, one way is to always do a compaction if there are two, if, there, if there's more than one on a level, and this is the level um, mechanism. So for level to set a threshold of two, every time there are two SS tables, we do a compaction. And the other way is for tiered, we wait until there are F many on, an, on a level, and then we do a compaction. Um, this gives us the, that behavior of uh, things, I mean, um, you, have, you, you can get low read amplification by um, doing more compactions to move on to, from one level to the next. I know you can also get, um, if you want, um, better write amplification by doing just one compaction to, to move on to the next level, but you pay the price of having to consult more than one SS table on each level. Uh, we can combine these two by um, just using a single parameter, which can be a negative number, and uh, for negative numbers using leveled compaction, uh, using the, the, the threshold of two, and for positive numbers using um, tiered compaction or a threshold of F. And when we do this, we can have a, a space of uh, values where we can, where um, the read amplification grows by, as this W grows, and the write amplification, on the other hand, reduces as this W grows. So we have lots of options to choose from, including some ones corresponding to leveled compaction strategy and ones corresponding to SDCS. This is the basic strategy. Um, there are things you can do to improve it. The first, the very basic first thing that you can do is that you can allow this uh, scaling parameter, this W, to be defined separately for each level. So for example, you can have, uh, some of the examples I give here, is that you can have tiered compaction on the, on the bottom few levels, and then leveled compaction on the top ones. This is, um, this actually is a, a mixture of leveled and tiered, which gives you uh, the organization which is very close to, to the leveled compaction of the data, so it's not too hard to read. On the other hand, it gives you a larger buffer, so you can accept a lot of writes, and uh, they can be written very quickly for a while, and then you get them organized after after they move a little, a little, a few levels to the hierarchy. This has been helpful for, for some Astro users uh, for us. One other thing I did here is uh, I really don't like the fact that 
two means uh, tiered compaction with factor of four. Uh, so I changed the way that things can be described is also as T4, um, meaning tiered compaction with fun factor of four, and leveled compaction with fun factor L is L10 rather than minus eight. Um, yeah, so that's one improvement. Another is um, splitting data. So if you, if you look at this basic strategy, because it relies on, on, um, on the size of SS tables to, uh, to choose where something belongs on the levels, it has the same problem as STCS that um, the size grows a lot and uh, eventually you end up with SS tables which are um, extremely large, in the hundreds of gigabytes of data, sometimes even terabytes of data. And uh, to compact something takes a very long time. It needs a lot of extra space. Uh, uh, in the extreme, you need 100% extra space to be available on your machine to be able to do compactions on the highest levels. Um, one of the easiest ways to, to fix this or to solve this problem is to uh, do sharding of your, um, of your compaction space. You can do this with any version of any recent version of Cassandra, basically by using data directories. Um, the, the way the data directories are implemented, that every piece of data is split among these data directories, and then compaction strategies are independently created for every data directory. And in this way, you can, uh, on one hand, do multiple compactions in parallel on the same level, and on the other hand, you have a limit on the uh, maximum size of the uh, SS table, which is not many times smaller than, than the overall size of the data. We've used this in the um, initial implementation of UCS, and uh, we were very easily able to, to scale uh, compaction by a factor of something like 10. So we were able to, to, to use to safely use 10, 10 terabytes of data on a node rather than the recommended one limit. Um, this has its problems. Uh, one of them is that you can't really, I mean, if you, if you can't predetermine the size of the data that you want to have on a node, um, you can't really set up the shard count in the beginning. Also, it creates a lot of small SS tables at the bottom, which can be a problem. And um, one of the other things that's uh, worrisome is that if you, if you get a new node, things have to move between the different um, data directories, which becomes a problem. It's difficult to handle. There is a better way to deal with, uh, with splitting and sharding. Uh, and this better way depends on something that we call um, density. So it depends on actually two, um, two concepts, density and overlap. Overlap is easier when we're trying to get a piece of data from, um, when we're queried for a piece of data, we have a, we have a given uh, partition key from which we calculate the token, and for that token, the number of SS tables and the SS tables we have to consult are the SS tables that cover this token. So if we, if SS tables don't overlap on disk, we don't have to consult the ones that don't, don't overlap with this uh, specific um, key. So as a trigger for when to, when to compact things on the same level, we couldn't, we could use only the ones that overlap rather than uh, the total number of SS tables on a level. Um, this makes us avoid compacting when we, when we don't have to because there are just SS tables on that level, but um, they're, they're not increasing our um, read amplification. This would be the case, for example, if we have the, the results of level compaction working on something, we have created an SS table run. This is SS table run. There's a lot of SS tables on the same level, but they only uh, produce one uh, read amplification. And the other part of the, the solution is this concept of density. Um, if you look at the right side here, um, uh, there are a few examples of how you can compact uh, four SS tables of 100 megabytes each, uh, where they're on level zero, so they cover, cover the whole token range um, in, in the database. So one of the ways is to not split anything. You get 400 megabytes in as input, you get one SS table of four megabytes, 400 megabytes as output, and um, uh, yeah, you can use this SS table. The problem is that the next time you do a compaction is going to grow even, even bigger and bigger, and uh, you have the problem that's associated with STCS at the moment. One, 
How about splitting this as a stable? Uh, there are two examples of doing this uh, below. In the first case, we just split it in four, uh, four points to, to get into four equally sized uh, sections. These four sections don't overlap, so they don't increase the rate amplification beyond one. But, um, yeah, they're smaller, so you can do compactions on them, which are, again, with a, with a controlled size. Uh, now, the question is, how do you assign a level to these things? How do you know that they have been compacted to, um, to know that these are on level one rather than level zero? And the key here is density. Uh, in this diagrams, the vertical size of, uh, of the chunk is the density of the object. So the, the area of the, of the block you see is the size of the SS table. It covers a certain token range. Uh, the fact that they don't overlap is uh, given by, uh, by the space between them. And because you have to put the same amount of data in a smaller section of the token range, they have to have the same, the same height. This height is the density. So density is calculated as the size of the SS table divided by the token range it covers. And the interesting thing is if you split in the middle and split this one in four equal parts, you get the same density as output. But you can split anywhere. You can split it in the one chunk that's 100, one chunk that's 200, another chunk that's 50. Uh, and, and still will have the, ten, the same density because it's, it's covering more of the, of the, I mean, that portion of the token range with the same, uh, same way of um, combining data from multiple sources. Uh, this relies on the fact that in Cassandra, we, uh, data is always randomly distributed among the token range. If it's not, of course, this, this wouldn't work, but Cassandra pays a lot of uh, attention on making sure that your data is distributed. So that's, that's usually a fact. Now, um, how do we take advantage of this? We change the definition to use density instead of size. So levels are now, now determined by the density of an SS table. And every time we have a compaction, uh, so we, we may have this example where we take four and transform them into four, but the density of the first one was uh, four times 100 megabytes. The density of the output is 400 megabytes. It's four times bigger. So we, you can use the density to uh, determine the level. It again grows by the spe specified fun factors. We use the same um, threshold, but this time we apply the threshold only to overlapping SS tables rather than just to all SS tables in, in the level. Um, how do we take advantage of this? Um, so we have a, UCS defines a sharding scheme, which was um, something pretty simple. The objective of that sharding scheme is to be able to um, try to get SS tables to be close to the same size, um, so the given target size. So every time we do a compaction, we calculate the, the density of the result or how much data we, we would have in the result. And then for that density, we calculate the number, a number of shards, which is uh, cho chosen so that uh, the resulting SS tables would be split, would be split so that their size is uh, rough, very, is close to, to the target SS table size. Um, but we only do this in um, powers of two so that we always split things in the middle. Uh, the reason for this is to be able to, to say that for every density level, if we have a certain number of boundaries, then for all higher levels, these boundaries will still apply. And this is useful to be able to, um, um, to just limit the, the, the amount of SS tables a compaction needs to use. I'm going to give you an example of how this works now. Uh, suppose we have um, a set of new, newly flushed SS tables, four of them on level zero, and from some previous operations, we have some, some leftover SS table on level one. And um, at the first instance, uh, these four SS tables, because on this level zero in this example, the tr trigger is four SS tables, we're seeing four SS tables, so we need to do a compaction. Um, the total number of, uh, the total size of these four SS tables is 400 megabytes. Uh, they cover the whole token range. So we calculate that the number of shards we need to split these into is four for the target of 100 megabytes for each. Um, compaction starts. It, every time it reaches one of these boundaries, it opens a new 
a stable plow. So the end result of the compaction is four plows of 100 megabytes each. They are non-overlapping, and they each cover about one-fourth of the total range. Um, once compaction finishes, we don't need these shard boundaries anymore. They're not relevant, so we drop them, and we delete the sources. A little bit later, let's say that we got four new more new SS tables, but this time something happened and they're smaller. They're 60 megabytes instead of, instead of 100. So we take these four and we compact them. Um, to compact them, this time the total size of these uh, SS tables is 240 megabytes. So instead of four, we need only two shards for them. We define one single uh, shard boundary, and when we compact, we end up with two SS tables, uh, 120 megabytes each. Now, uh, again, we delete the sources and remove the shard boundaries because they, they're not necessary. Now, what happens the next time um, UCS is trying to select something to compact? Um, the threshold for this level one is, uh, is three, so um, we need to check if there are uh, three overlapping SS tables somewhere to, to do a compaction. We do this by first identifying so-called overlap sections, where uh, for every key we try to find um, the highest level, the highest number, I mean, all of the SS tables that need to be consulted to serve a request for that key. Um, so we split the space into these overlap sections. In this case, A and E overlap on some parts of the, um, the token space. B and E overlap as well. So we have two sections, A and E and B and E. But because A and B don't overlap, they can't be put into the same overlap section. So uh, we have separate ones for A, E and B, E. Then the other ones are C and F. And finally, for the fourth portion of the, of the space, D, F, and G overlap. Now, D, F, and G is three SS tables, so we have an overlap of three. Our threshold is three, so we need to do a compaction because of this for the D, F, G uh, SS tables. But the D, F, and G also overlap with another SS table, C, because F extends beyond the boundaries of, um, of the fourth uh, region here. So we also take C into the compaction. Now compaction starts. We have these uh, four SS tables we're working with. Their total size is 430 megabytes, but they only cover one, one half of the token range. So the density we calculate for them is uh, 860 megabytes. And this 860 megabytes lets us uh, choose a shard count of eight for the result. We then do the compaction, write the result, and we were getting um, two SS tables which are a bit smaller because they don't have anything for uh, where the third input would be for the F and G, and two SS tables which are a bit larger as so, an end result. And again, after the compaction completes, the shard boundaries are dropped because they don't, don't matter anymore, they're not necessary. We will calculate the overlaps on the next stage. Um, yeah, this is basically how uh, unified compaction, compaction works. There's one final trick that we do to improve the performance of, uh, of compaction, um, and that's to analyze what happens when compaction is late. And uh, you, you have a lot of load which is sustained and doesn't let go. Um, for the existing SS tables um, treat this differently. LCS, for example, uh, completely um, turns into STCS when there's load that it can't handle because it has this, uh, uh, this function that uh, for, on level zero it does some, some additional uh, STCS behavior. And if uh, load doesn't, doesn't let go, eventually it turns out completely into, into STCS. Uh, well, STCS has a different problem that uh, it's completely focuses on level on the lowest levels, and it can end up in a state where it compacts level zero all the time and never does anything about level one. You can end up with thousands of SS tables on level one, which you don't want either. So the, the thing we decided to do is um, to try and reduce the um, read amplification the most by always picking the bucket which has the highest overlap. If we have many compaction opportunities, we choose the one that has the highest overlap. Um, and if there are many uh, with the same overlap and some of them are on lower level, we prefer the lower level because it's covering a, a wider portion of the token space, which is going to help more queries. Um, 
once we do this, what happens is that uh, uh, in the beginning there will be lots of SS tables on level zero, they'll get compacted onto level one, but eventually level one will start getting too many SS tables and it will get the attention that STCS doesn't give it, for example. And the end result is if that load continues, um, the unified compaction strategy can turn the expected state into something different and uh, eventually be able to do something, which is some organization, uh, which is uh, of the data, which is not what you've asked it to do, but it's still something that it can, and that the least, that, I mean, the most that it can maintain for this load. Um, what about time series data, especially uh, time series data that has uh, time to live or expiration? UCS can deal with that too. Um, the main thing is that it can do whole table expiration like uh, the time window compaction strategy. Um, and here we don't do um, special handling of time, but rather we rely on the fact that once something moves among the levels of the, of the hierarchy, it grows older. And eventually it will be old enough to be um, expired as a whole SS table. Uh, one of the things that are a problem for the, for the legacy strategies is that they often would mix um, SS tables of a different age when doing compaction, and uh, this generates overlap in time between different SS tables, which is a problem for, for time-based expiration, for whole table expiration. You can't expire something that overlaps with something else. Um, this UCS avoids if it can, and the end result is if you're using a scaling, higher scaling parameters like D20, uh, here at compaction with a, with a high number. Uh, UCS works pretty well for time series workloads. Um, another thing that's an uh, important feature of UCS is um, that you can easily change scaling parameters. You can start with something, you can see that uh, you're doing less work and you need uh, better read amplification. You can adjust it uh, downward to something that's more um, more bright heavy and has a less read amplification. Um, maybe something starts compacting for a little bit, but everything that was done before in the by the previous uh, configuration of the compaction strategy is still valuable for the new state. It's still work done, and it's still something that we're going to use. Um, this means that you can very easily change scaling parameters, and one of the things we've been uh, actually we have been implementing is you can also think of an automatic change of scaling parameters or an adaptive compaction strategy because changing scaling parameters here is easy. Uh, one important thing about this is that the splitting is completely independent of the scaling parameters. Uh, the way we decide to shard the pieces of data when we write them, it doesn't matter at all what um, fun factors you've selected for the levels. Um, it's still going to be the same, so it doesn't change anything for the um, when you're changing scaling parameters for for splitting, and um, yeah, it doesn't violate the structure of things. This also applies to moving from LCS and STCS. If you're upgrading from STCS to UCS, um, you would have lots of SS tables that, that cover the whole space. They have different size because they have a different size, they still have a different density covering the whole space, and they're still in a hierarchy of multipliers by the, the given threshold. Uh, so for the SCS default of uh, threshold of four, we have a suitable scaling parameter for UCS, which is T4. Uh, so if you upgrade from STCS to UCS with T4, you're very likely to not do any additional compactions at the moment that you're upgrading, and your data is gradually going to be converted into UCS and split into more and more individual SS tables rather than these long chunks that, long chunks that uh, STCS constructs. Also, for the case of uh, upgrade from LCS, you would have lots and lots of small SS tables, but because they're split during compaction, all of them cover a smaller section of the, um, of the token range, so between one level and the next, the density still grows. So in fact, UCS understands the level uh, that uh, leveled compaction strategy generates, and it doesn't even need these markers of level that LCS relies on heavily. And 
Again, you can very easily convert to, to UCS using suitable parameters, L10 for the default LCS, for example. And um, most of the work done by, I mean, all of the work done by the previous compaction strategy is going to be used by the new compaction strategy. It may trigger a few new compactions because it has a better understanding of um, local density. Uh, um, so it may be that one, one single as a stable run on the level is understood by LCS to be below the threshold, but some parts of it may be denser, and UCS is going to understand these denser parts as belonging to the next level, and it's going to trigger a compaction. So it's a little bit more precise than LCS and, and what it does. And because of that, it may, you may have a few extra compactions at the beginning of the process. But again, upgrade for, from STCS on LCS is essentially painful. During, the process, during uh, your normal um, production use, you can just switch compaction to UCS and it will pick it up. It will continue working. And um, it will gradually change to, to the new format. Uh, yeah. Finally, there are um, things that we haven't yet done and we're also thinking of, uh, of doing for, for the unified compaction strategy. Uh, one of them is that uh, it's nice that we have a target as a stable size, which by default is one gigabyte, but if you have a lot of data, for example, if you're trying to put 10 terabytes of data on a node, you would end up with tens of thousands of SS tables. Cassandra, unfortunately, can't deal with tens of thousands of S tables. So it's, um, at the moment, you actually, for these use cases where you, you're expecting to have a higher, um, higher overall data um, content on the node, you would need to start with a higher um, S stable target, a stable size target. Uh, that's something, having users to choose is something that I'd like to avoid. And one of the ways to do this is to let the SS table size grow as the, as the density grows. So right now you have two choices. In STCS, your SS table can grow as the data grows, and you have just one shard. In the current version of UCS, you have many shards, and your SS tables are uh, aiming to, to remain at the same size. What about the combination? What about letting the SS table size grow by a square root of the, of the growth of the data size, and also letting the the shard count grow by the square root of the, you know, of the data size. You can do that, and that's actually very efficient and very, very useful for any size of, of data on the node. Then another improvement that you can think of is uh, to allow a time component. So that's one of the things we thought in, um, originally we might need, is to be able to form levels based on, based on time. So for example, everything that was, uh, so on a, Maybe you create a level for, for every day um, that has expired since the data was written to turn it into something similar to TWCS. We can do this. We can also do something, something else which is uh, pretty valuable for some, for some users. You can define a mechanism where um, every piece of data that's beyond a certain age, for example, you would want to compact it into one single SS table. So essentially do a major compaction every, every X days. Um, this is something that certain users really need and do manually. Well, the compaction strategy could easily be changed to, to also support this. And the third uh, extension I already mentioned, adaptive compaction, because it, it's so easy to switch scaling parameters for, for UCS, you can imagine uh, a mechanism of doing this automatically and uh, adaptive compaction strategy. We've been experimenting with this for some time, and we expect to have something working soon. Yeah, that's the end of my talk. And uh, how about questions? How do I address the mixing of tables with different pages? Um, you know, the, the, the reason that this normally happens in, in STCS is because uh, when compaction is late and it has to select a subset of SS tables from, um, from the ones that it has on the, on the level. The way that STCS selects this is by size. If you select them by timestamp instead, 
you're likely not going to mix the old ones with the new. And uh, that way, you, you just, the compaction creates something that has a smaller span. And then the next time uh, you do this, they are not going to overlap. The ones that get on the next level are not going to overlap with the ones that, that you uh, compacted the previous time. That's actually a very simple trick, but it seems to be doing, doing pretty well. If it, I mean, it's not going to be constructed by UCS. If you flush data, it's going to be uh, compact. Yeah. Okay. So you're talking about things like uh, usual uh, user supplied timestamps and repair, right? We no, we don't fix that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the the objective here is not to uh, introduce extra overlap. Time overlap. Sorry, there was a question. Um, UCS is, is coming with Cassandra 5. Like many other improvements, uh, it's already committed to the code base and we're waiting for the release. Just one? Um, the question is whether we need to do sharding by different data directories for uh, 10 terabytes of data or more than that. Um, UCS does, I mean, UCS doesn't need any sharding. It does the splitting automatically and it splits. The difference between this sharding and the UCS sharding is that it grows with uh, the, the, the amount of data that you enter. So level zero is going to have just one shard. Your level one is going to have four shards. Your level Two is going to have 16 and so on, so it will grow with, with the amount of data that you have. So it's kind of automatic sharding, depending on what, how much data you have. We haven't tried yet. Um, I mean, we did an example with the earlier version with sharding, and we were able to do 40. Um, and no, you don't. I mean, in this version, of you, I mean, in this case, your your compactions are going to be compactions which take SS, take SS tables of one gigabyte, four of them or whatever your fun factor is, and compact them into something that's four gigabytes. So your each individual compactions is very is very small. So the only thing you need to control is to not uh, schedule more compactions when you're close to to the space that you have. And because you have also a limit of the number of compactions you can do concurrently, so let's say you have a target of one terabyte, you're doing a four to one uh, compaction if it's a T4 uh, mechanism, so you get four gigabytes of extra space needed for every thread. So with 240 gigabytes altogether, you're set. <laughs> 